So many of you, as your colleagues from the area, or at least from the state, I take it, and you're probably familiar with, uh, or you have noticed over the past, let's say, three, four, five years, no? a growing list of courses being uh, offered fully online. No? Mm -hmm. There's a big push from Tallahassee towards, uh, well, ideally towards uh, arriving at a bachelor's degree for uh, about $10,000 a year. No? Uh, and part of that, you know, if that is ever going to be a reality, uh, the, the fully online classes are, are, are going to be a huge component of how one achieves that. No? So there's been this you know, systemic push over the past several years for this. No? And we have felt it at FAU. Um, uh, we have felt it. And uh, one of the specific ways in which we have felt this is through um, uh, through a push, really a directive, you know, straight out of our product office, to do something we hadn't done ever before. That is, uh, offer the entire elementary um, Spanish sequence, basically Spanish 1 and 2, you know, elementary Spanish 1 and 2, to offer that entire sequence online. You know? It's a very strategic sequence because in the state of Florida, it's a requirement for the vast majority of uh, undergraduate degrees you know, to have um, proficiency at that level. You know? So it's, you're talking, there are only a few exceptions. Engineering is one of them. Uh, but even those students end up taking a foreign language uh, if they have the time and space. No? So it's a, it's a very, very high demand um, space, no? academic space. And so our provost was very, very smart to get us going here, and we did. No? Uh, but of course, one doesn't jump right into this. No? Uh, and so, uh, this is what we had, um, and I'll talk to you about what we, what our strategy was going into um, implementing these, uh, this fully, um, this entire sequence uh, in a fully online format. Um, I'll share with you what other uh, institutions nearby uh, have been doing, uh, what we thought would work, what we thought wasn't working very well, and so on. But. Here's where we, uh, at Florida Atlantic University, here's where, where we come in. No? By the time in the um, uh, uh, institutions within the uh, state, uh, within the uh, SUS, the state university system, as well as others, uh, the way that um, they all get together virtually is through Florida virtual campus. No? And in the summer, this is where FDU comes in, no? in the fall of 2014, but just to give you an idea of, where, of what exists prior to that. No? In the summer of 2014, you had 136 uh, fully online uh, Spanish language classes. No? The vast majority of them are uh, uh, Spanish uh, 1120, 1121, at FIU you guys call it 1130, but it's really the same thing. Um, and, so, and so this is what you have offered in the summer. No? Uh, only a few exceptions, you can actually count them on two fingers, the exceptions. You had uh, advanced grammar composition, and you had a medical Spanish course that I developed at uh, Florida Atlantic. No? Those were the only two exceptions. Outside of that, so you had 134 Spanish 1, Spanish uh, 2, and all of them were full to capacity. No? Many of them were actually our own students no? from Florida Atlantic University taking those courses at one of these participating institutions. No? From the U.S. to, uh, well, you know, we free stuff, I'm not going to get you down this. No? So, so we come in here, no? we come in here with six uh, sections, no? four uh, Spanish one and two Spanish two. Uh, and so this is where we are, and we're pretty much doing the same thing in the spring. No? So we come in, no? and we want to, our charge is very simple, no? what we are asked to do, no? our task here, to elect. No? We want to start at six, and we are expanding. I believe for fall of next year, we're going to eight, I believe. And I think they're, well, no, they're not full because students haven't uh, begun to register just yet. Uh, but in summertime, we're offering two, I believe, and those filled up within the first two or three days. Uh, so the demand is there. No? You have been doing it for some time now, yes. uh, and other institutions as well. So the, the, the demand is there. Our charge is uh, very simple. We want to uh, create a few of uh, these sections 
and we have to be successful. No? And successful here means uh, statistically it means the passing rate of you want to be somewhere above 75, no? somewhere around there. Uh, anything beyond that is, is you know, merits uh, reconsideration no? or replanning your entire structure of how you're doing things and so on. Um, so that was pretty much it. Very, very simple stuff. Challenges, no? when you're teaching you know, part of what you do in an elementary uh, language course, uh, uh, whichever language, is basically to develop proficiency. And that, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it, as some of you probably know, um, it's a lot more, it, it, it's a lot easier, far easier said than done. No? It's something that requires not only constant practice of the language, uh, to build up vocab, to build up, uh, a set of grammatical tools that you want your students to have readily, readily available to them. But it's also a matter of just building confidence, no? and building the belief in the student that you know this can be done, this can be achieved. No? Um, many uh, foreign language students approach that classroom uh, with considerable fear, a no? uh, fear comparable to the way I remember I approached organic chemistry many, many years ago. Uh, thinking that this is an entirely different language, you know, what do you mean, you know, a radical, a this, a that, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. No? So it's, um, it's intimidating, it takes time, you know? and it takes, you know, a key, a key component of this, you know, over the past, the, I want to say, 10 decades, you know, for as long as this has been institutionalized, you not know, the, uh, uh, the formal teaching, you know, that uh, formal language within, you know, uh, higher education has been the constant interaction between one human being and another human being. No? That is key. No? Um, it's, 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 it's absolutely key uh, for this to take place, especially this, no? oral proficiency. No? You can trick the brain into doing many, 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 many things. No? Fooling the brain into believing that you're interacting with a human being when indeed you are not interacting with a human being. That has that has not been done. I think that's a good thing. No? Even with virtual reality and so on and so forth, it already knows no? that it is interacting, in essence, with a program. No? In essence, with a pre-established uh, uh, pre list of choices no? that will take you this way, this way, and that way, and that way, uh, and so on and so on. No? So, how do you, you know, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a challenge. No? How do you do this in a fully online environment no? where you have, you're we're supposed to have asynchronous? Um, back and forth, no, where everyone is not on, uh, in the same virtual place at the same time, not necessarily. Uh, how do you do that? That was our challenge. No? And we had looked at uh, the experience of a handful of institutions no? in, um, before designing no? our, um, our curriculum uh, here, no? our syllabi and so on. And the University of Minnesota had a horrendous experience with this. Horrendous. We're talking passing rate of 57 one semester. Uh, next semester was even worse, and then they just dropped it. Um, it was awful. University of Florida has, uh, had been doing very well, um, and they attributed their success. This is mainly interaction through um, uh, foreign language um, uh, forums you know, where we participate. And so we asked them, you know, what do you, so you've been successful, what do you attribute your, your, your success to? And each and every time they pointed to, we asked the same person, so other folks at UCF and, and other folks, and everyone pointed to um, interpersonal uh, interaction, you know, that they dedicated, yes, it was a fully online class, you know, but there was a lot of like face-to-face -face, you know, over Skype or its equivalent. You know, so there was that connection you know, with the human being. You know? uh, students tend to relax, if you will, you know? when they know that they're dealing in essence with just a computer program, with just a list of activities, and maybe some assessment at the end of three or four of those activities. You know? um, they tend to relax maybe too much, you know? thinking that they can actually complete all of this in a week. You know? uh, and that some, sometimes, many times, works very much against their, uh, their own interests. You know? Uh, and so we wanted to pace our, yes, this would be a fully online class, but, but um, with a very clear, rigorous uh, structure pace, you know? and with plenty of 
just human to human interactions, right? So the student doesn't feel that he's just out in the wilderness, he or she's out in the wilderness all alone and so on. So how do you do that? That was that's basically what we set out to do. Um, all right, so what did we do? Alright, so strategy was basically this. Strategy was there are a few things we can do. We have uh, if um, Florida Atlanta University, we have a wonderful uh, support, uh, student support center. No? It's the Center for Learning Student Success. My colleague, Dr. Like Weber, got here around. Um, and, and obviously. And we also have our um, uh, Center for e learning. No? And we get tons of support. No? Uh, we have tons of support resources available to us through those centers. No? And so the idea was to ask for e-tutors, no? We already have tutors, we have a wonderful a handful of tutors that are physically present uh, and available to our students. Uh, again, it's a, it's a fairly large group of students when you're pretty much required to take those two semesters, no? So you're guaranteed um, a full student e uh, each semester, no? So we already had our physical students there, but we wanted a couple of, um, of tutors, no? call them e-tutors, no? to exclusively serve this incoming fully online population, right? to be exclusively dedicated to, to those folks. No? And the logistics of this, most of us, I think, use, or many of us use Blackboard. No? It's been more or less almost imposed upon many uh, institutions before. Uh, and one of the tools there is Collaborate, no? which basically allows you to, uh, for these virtual interactions, not much like Skype, but it's, it's built in, it records it, it's very, very neat. No? It's a very neat solution for meeting uh, and recording those meetings. Uh, and so we figured, okay, so we're going to make these e-tutors available. Furthermore, no, it's not enough just to make them available. We have to make it mandatory no, for our students to meet with those e-tutors. No? And we did that. No? We made it mandatory for uh, each student to meet with the e-tutor at the end of each unit. No? Just a 15-minute review. No? Uh, did not have to take place in lingua, no? they didn't have to speak in the language, right? so there's no intimidation already, right? and the idea of meeting the tutor is that you're relaxed, you review, you iron out whatever imperfections um, in understanding you have, and so on. No? So that was the idea. Uh, overall, we came to about, uh, each student would have to meet uh, about four times with the tutor and just review uh, throughout the semester. In addition to that, no, that was not enough for us, no, because there, you know, there's review taking place, but actually very little practicing of the language. No. So in addition to that, we threw in three, no, and these were mandatory, no, we threw in three uh, conversations. No. Each unit, many of you, some of you probably know, uh, units uh, in this environment are organized around um, a vocab or a, 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 a given situation. No talking about your family, and so on and so forth. So at the end of each unit, we do about five units, but at the end of three of those units, students have to schedule a conversation with either an e-tutor, in this case, an e-conversation partner, and basically have a conversation all about that topic. We gave them, we do not believe in surprises at that Florida Atlantic, so we give them a pretty good description or what's coming their way, or what their expectations are, you know, of how we're going to uh, rate them, you know, um, evaluate their performance, and so on. Uh, but just three. You know? So we want to increase you know, even more human-to-human -human, you know, and personal um, uh, interaction. And of course, start the practice going. You know? And keep them more or less on schedule, right? so that we do not end up with, I have one week, is it possible for me to do everything, and so on. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't you know? That's not the idea of the whole online environment. You know? We also, and this, we're basically just trying to make the absolute most of all the resources that we have available to us at Florida Atlanta. We also threw in a, um, uh, some of our community partners. You know? Florida Atlantic University is something of a powerhouse when it comes to community engagement in the entire state of Florida. Uh, we partner with well over high, well over 100 institutions you know, all over, especially South Florida. Uh, and so 
we have wonderful interinstitutional relationships you know, with many of our neighbors you know, throughout South Florida, especially. Out of my own department, you know, I run um, uh, academic service learning and community outreach. Uh, so we have uh, we have fairly strong relationships, for instance, with the West Palm Beach Housing Authority and with just the whole network of nursing homes. You know. And we work specifically with uh, the elderly, of course. Uh, uh, but the monolingual elderly, I'm talking about you know, people that are well beyond retirement, you know, that do not speak English or you know, not beyond 15, 20 words and a couple phrases here and there, right? And uh, right in the county that has the second highest elderly population in the whole state, that has the highest elderly population in the whole country, right? Miami-Dade has the highest, Palm Beach has the second highest, right? So we're there, you know? and of course, as an educator, you look at these things as opportunities, right? as resources. You know? You know, how can I do something with this? Right? Uh, so it's actually a, a, a very, very rich environment. You know, if you're teaching a foreign language, you, know, you have like, all of these people available to you. And all these people have tons of free time. You know? mm -hmm. And you know, the, right, if you ask, you know, if you survey um, the elderly population, the vast majority of them you know, will identify the main source of I'll say, somewhere between discomfort and displeasure, you know, if there was a word. You know. The main source of that is actually the feeling of social isolation, right? And the feeling that, like literally, you know, your, your, your sense, your, your notion you know, of your value to society just, you know, just decreases significantly. There's this sense of void and so forth. You know. um, that's quite acute. In, especially in the United States, less so in other countries, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, of a cliff effect you know, in, in the United States. So we do many, many things, you know, face to face, in person. You know, we send, you know, each semester we send uh, about 40 to 50 students to these locations, and our students interact with, um, with that population in a handful of ways, you know, from gardening to cooking and many, many things. You know. Do they have to be bilingual? The students? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. Uh, it, the whole idea is that uh, we send them uh, students. They're mostly intermediate to advanced mm -hmm. uh, students who are trying to gain uh, or strengthen their command of language X, you know, Spanish in uh, in most of the cases. But we also work with a handful of French and Creole speaking uh, folks, in, and we work with at least two or three Italian speaking folks. Uh, so the idea is that the student gains. A handful of things, not greater command of the language, right? The community partner no, gains companionship, no, gains a window into a whole different generation and world, no? Uh, we actually got, uh, we're, uh, you know this, we actually got the uh, Center for either to donate a, a laptop, actually several laptops, uh, to some of these centers. And so what some of our students did uh, in person, uh, in person students, was actually like, uh, teach some of these folks how to access email. Uh, we created something like 15 or 18 uh, Facebook accounts, right? So they now have friends, you know, uh, if they're your friends. It's fantastic. Uh, and so forth. So it's 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 uh, it's been a really really good. Um, it's been a you know it's been a win 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 situation. Uh, it's been very very. Good. So we had that resource available to us, no? and uh, and here we have. A situation where we have a need for that increased face-to-face -face interaction. No? We want to give a human face, no, to it. No? We want our classroom to interact. Yeah, to interact. No, we want to link, no, uh, into the outside world. We want our students to see that, you know, this isn't just coursework. It's something that uh, that makes you more marketable. That deep down, actually, and uh, makes you a better human being no? because it teaches you compassion. It, you know, it, uh, it opens uh, many, many things for you. No? It really goes at the heart of what academia is supposed to be, you know? In essence, it ultimately make you a better citizen, make you a better, um, a better human being down the road. And so, what we did <coughs> was basically this, you know? We said, right, so for those three conversations that you must have, right, you can have them with either uh, the e-tutor, right, Jamie Wright, who wouldn't be here uh, today, or you could have it with one of our community partners, you know? Community partners. Our uh, community partners already had those two computers, no? so our face-to-face -face students were right. teaching these folks how to use a computer. Okay. And then here comes the practice from the other. Right? So that was the, the complementary trick. 
And logistically also, because you know we're talking about nearly 200 students, no? our e-tours could not possibly afford uh, accommodate no, that many students. So uh, logistically, it turned out something like 40% of our students would have had to interact with our uh, off-site uh, folks. No? Uh, and uh, and it, was, uh, it was beautiful to see. Uh, it was beautiful to see. I, I think it worked. Uh, some of our students complained that it was, well, they complained that, that these folks didn't speak any English. Uh, anyway, yeah. but, <laughs> did, the, did the community partners help explain to these people, because they're monolingual, so yes. the student who has Spanish 1, <laughs> or is in Spanish yeah. 1, can't explain to the partner that you yeah. know, these, this is the only vocabulary I have. And how, yes. how do those conversations go when you know, yeah. each one has very limited ability in the other's yes. language? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's actually a situation that we, that we wanted. No? Uh, we wanted that situation because it so uh, it's very person, very close. Oh, sorry. The person that is um, on the other side, mm -hmm. not the student, this person. speaks Spanish, right, right? But doesn't speak English, right? Right, 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 right. And then the student speaks English and level level one, one Spanish. A little bit of Spanish, yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. Okay. Oh. Interesting. And his his objective here no? yes. is to somehow describe his family. No? Mm -hmm to this person, no? so he knows exactly what the objective is. No? And, right, the questions are nothing but requests for information. No? Mm -hmm. And he has to get the same information from this person. No? That's his task. No? And he has a little to do this. No? This, is what I'm, this is what we're going to break it on, and so on and so on. Now, these conversations in elementary Spanish 1, which assumes that students have had no, no experience, no exposure uh, to the language before, did not take place, did not take place until I would say something like the eighth week of the semester or so, somewhere around uh, spring break or fall break with the equivalent. No? So, you know, we're not just throwing them in. No? Mm -hmm. This is how immersion works. No? If, you yeah. were to, no, if you were to just yeah. fly over to a Spanish speaking country no? and put yourself in a situation, you're going to be uncomfortable. No? But it's, you know, hopefully the level of uncomfort or uh, discomfort, I should say. Is not enough to just make you want to stay in your room, close the door. And yeah, not it's the not even the computer. You're not directly talking to the person right. in front of you. You right. have a computer in between. Right, right, right. And so you the, put on Google here. Or and say, yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Most of them, that, uh, get back to your question, most of them worked well. Uh, those that did complain, you know, they, they complained that the other person didn't speak uh, English, no? but we had to remind them this is a Spanish class, right? This is what, mm -hmm. this, is what this is. Are you going to look at outcomes? So this is the first We're semester that we've done yes. this, right? Yes. Are we going to look at outcomes for the students who worked with the monolingual community mm -hmm. partner versus those who worked with our tutors? Absolutely. Because Kenya's floating yes. now. She's not here, unfortunately, but yes. she's maybe mm -hmm. an English speaker. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we certainly agree. probably cheat a little bit more to you know, hopefully she doesn't because we trained her well and she's amazing, but yes. it would be interesting to see she's the differences in, in their abilities. <coughs> yeah, 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 in their performance. Absolutely, yes, it, uh, it's one thing that we'll be working on over the summer. Uh, take a look at how those two, these students did as opposed to the students that did not interact with them. And overall, take a look at how our spring folks did versus the false folks did. No? What kind of reaction did the yeah. residents of the nursing homes mm -hmm. give to They love the attention. They absolutely love the attention. Uh, uh, primarily, uh, these folks at the West Palm Beach Housing Authority, which is, um, it's something like two steps removed from a nursing home. These folks uh, live in their own units. Mm -hmm. they're, very, they're very, very proud of their independence. No? Uh, they're very proud of not having to depend on someone for basic, needs and things uh, and but they you know they, they absolutely love the attention and they love the you know the, the window into you know, this generation you know, that, that we make available to them so they, they absolutely love the attention do you think any of these students will continue even though they're not being graded on it anymore? many of our students um, I don't know about these guys here um, but many of the students that work with this population face-to-face -face do we started doing this three years, feeling old already. We started doing this about three years ago, and our first first time we, uh, first academic year, 
you know, there was this woman, this young woman, Alejandro, uh, and she she did this. She partnered with uh, another um, uh, person named Elda, and their project was basically cooking. You know? We, they got together once a week and they cooked. The other doesn't speak uh, English. Uh, Alejandro spoke very little Spanish. No, or not very little, she was actually intermediate. No? But make a long story short, uh, Alejandra, uh, since, since that happened, Alejandra uh, went to Madrid for a study for study abroad program over the summer, so it was the shortest thing. Uh, she came back, she graduated, she's now, I don't know exactly what she's working, but uh, where she's working, but I know she's working near Boca. And throughout this entire uh, length of time, she has been in constant contact with Ava, yeah. like, okay. like to this day. Uh, writes her letters when she's overseas. It's wonderful. Uh, still gets together. Really so, just, uh, this is fantastic. So this is what we what we try to do. You know? And our passing rate was something like uh, 84, I believe, for this semester. You know? We're, which is uh, comparable you know? to our face-to-face -face or the hybrid we do them up there. You know? So that's, that's where we are. Takes a tremendous amount of work, of, of course, course. Right? Uh, and tons of coordination and things. And one of the things that we did going into the spring was actually to tone things down a little bit, no? So at the instructor's request, okay. tone things down, uh, meaning requesting less of these conversations. No? I think they're a great idea. It's just a matter of maybe increasing the amount of support, maybe getting one person whose sole job is just to you know coordinate and make sure that these things uh, run smoothly, no? Uh, but this is, if anything, I'll actually increase this type of interaction. Right. Uh, All right, let me. And at this point, you know, these are Kenya's slides here. She would have told you uh, the type of activities that, uh, that took place during these review sessions. You know? And she, uh, what in her view worked, what did not work. Uh, and so on, but uh, these review sessions were very, 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 very important. We, uh, as faculty members, of course, we have office hours, no? but you would probably count no? out of a typical class of 24 or 30, no? go ahead and count how many of those students actually stop by your office hours, and you probably have maybe three or four, what do you say, maybe five, if it's a really busy semester. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, for good or for bad, it tends to happen when you make it mandatory when you put a carrot in front of it or or or, or the other or uh, through some other means. Stick. Yeah, or <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but yeah. Uh, so so we make these uh, mandatory requirements and many students ended up like enjoying them, you know? That's what she would have told you, you know? She made you know, let's not call these friendships, no, but she you know she made people uh, yeah. yeah. People they enjoyed her, her, her willingness to work, and, and it worked pretty well. And again, you're working with another human being on the, uh, on the other end, no? That's the... Yes, an interesting approach. The connection between mm -hmm. It makes a, an online course much more personable when there's a, a human, and there is that conversation piece, mm -hmm. and, and obviously applicable, because my daughter's speaking Spanish one in middle school, and. You know, if they don't speak it, just memorizing the vocabulary does not help you right. to right. really understand the language. Mm -hmm. Who, so when they do the conversations, they record it online? When they do the conversations, if they do the conversations over um, Blackboard's Collaborate, it's recorded automatically. So okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little feature and it's archived within the course. You know, so you don't have to worry about the, the um, resident the, well, fussing with a laptop when they may not be comfortable with a laptop. Right. Uh, two things. Right. So if, if the uh, if the conversation takes place with an e-tutor, you know, it takes place. It's guaranteed to take place over Blackboard. Excuse me. Blackboard's collaborate. Right? Mm -hmm. And there are no technical issues there. But it's just automatically recorded. Da, 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 da. When we go off the the virtual neighborhood that is the university, you know, outside of that outside of Blackboard in essence, no? then someone needs to record it on their end. No? In your In, well, we prefer, uh, the way that we did it was uh, that it was not recorded in nursing home because we didn't want to throw an additional technological um, um, 
obstacle, a potential obstacle there, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually put it on the student's shoulder, right? Okay. The student presumably younger, presumably more technologically savvy, and so on and so forth, no? So it was his or her responsibility to record, no? And then, you know, upload something and send it to the instructor. Right. Then it, it worked. We had maybe one or two of that forgot to press a button here or there. Uh, but we're talking about nearly 200 students, you know, and when you have that happen, just for, sure, for two or three years, that's okay. acceptable. Yeah. Or bearable. Okay. Right, so what are the other things, I'm going to jump in on, so, <laughs> on yes. yes. a huge advocate, as you can tell, for academic service learning, and he's um, collaborated with our center for several years now with um, students who are enrolled in intermediate Spanish 1 and 2 mm -hmm. have the option to do academic service learning, and we, each semester we get a little bit better at it. We now have some training for them. Um, we have some policies in place. They have to do a minimum um, number of hours, but that gets the intermediate students um, who are doing well in the course in, and they provide for tutoring in our center for Spanish 1, for beginning Spanish 1 and 2 students. And that's been a huge boon to us because it doesn't cost us, and we get more tutoring available. Absolutely. And since we have tremendous enrollment in that course, and it's wonderful, obviously, for the students who are intermediate because they have to really understand the material to be able to tutor the students who are in the beginning level courses. Um, so that's just been you know, a huge partnership. I mean, actually, when when Professor Almonte came to us with this concept, and you know, we had at the time Kenya, and um, she's fabulous, but you know, with 200 students. Um, we actually were able to take one of our ASL tutors and train them on e-tutoring, and we put them online as well to help with some of the load. So it's, you know, again, not only a huge benefit for the students enrolled in the course, but for our students um, who are participating in the ASL part. So and, and we had a couple of Italian, a few semesters that we right. were able to get our Italian, um, intermediate level Italian students to do it as well. So but Spanish has been a huge partner with us. Tons of, like the world makes tons of resources Absolutely. available to you. Yes. You just have to yeah. open your eyes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. So. And it, you know, we've obviously done it with our language, language, linguistics, and comparative literature, right? Yes. LLC yes, uh, department. But you know, there's certainly other, even other departments on our campuses that we would love to have that kind of collaboration with, and you know, taking some of the students who are in the upper level courses to help and do the academic service learning for students, you know, in lower um, courses. So we were just about out of time. So it was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've enjoyed your company. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, if you could fill out the evaluations, I'll go ahead and put that in here. What was your last name? What did you say? Almonte. Almonte. We apologize, Murky. Name for my office who did the Dango Gap feels absolutely terrible. It's like one thing I was responsible for. We, we, but she, in the middle of your session, she was texting me. She's sitting next door in her session, obviously just devastated about the room error. Aww. And she's texting me. She texted me a picture of the spreadsheet we gave her for the Dango Gap, and it did have you cool. in in one hundred and one. So she put the information as we gave it to her, so I'll take complete blame on that. So I apologize, but I think we still, because we were a small group, were able to yeah. get the full. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was that it's, cool. It is, it is the coolest initiative that, yeah. well, it's a great collaboration. I never even thought about something like that. For students who are learning a language to be able yeah. to yeah. relate. Yes. And, and you're right, the immersion thing is so important. To, yeah. I remember when I moved here, I started high school, I, I thought I knew English. I thought I knew English when I came here up. But my first friend was a guy from Bangladesh that didn't speak English, and a guy from Vietnam that didn't speak English. It was the three of us. Where are you from? Colombia. And I, I don't know how you communicate, but it was always the three of us. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So you guys learned, really learned it together, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, so, Brittany, did you meet her from our Math Learning Center? She's, she's the assistant director of our Math Learning Center. We, we say she has calling code threats, 
she knows the calling code of every country. So as a senior, I'm like, she would know the calling code for Vietnam. She would know for <laughs> but so I'm thinking, is Columbia five five? Is that your when you're five seven? Five seven. Five seven. Uh, five five is another C though down there. So, five, wow. Five seven. Man, you guys are all fives down there. I'll just tell her I messed up. Columbia's five seven. I'm tired of this. You're in FAU, right? Yes. Who does one person talk to over there so they can create more classes with different schedules for the, the language, for example, Italian or French? <laughs> well, for, well, Professor Almonte would be a, a closer contact for me. <laughs> What is, what is the need for more language classes? Yeah, I mean, the sessions that they have, the session they have is usually noon to to 1 p.m. or 1 to 2 p.m. So it's in the, day, it's in the middle of the day, and people that are working can go to those classes. Oh, wow. This is summertime or fall? Every semester, every semester. Every semester, the past two semesters, something like that. It's not, it's not for me, it's my girlfriend. She, she had to, she has nothing else to do. To fulfill her language requirement? No, she's doing, uh, she's studying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is she in the communication? Communication. So she's not saying she can't fulfill her yeah, language she's requirement. Yeah, she doesn't want to use her process. Do they have sections of French and Italian online yet? Or they're online? No, we're I think they slowly moving. Uh, she's completed the first level. She's completed the first level. Yeah. 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 Yeah